Hello and welcome to the vlog. I'm taking a slight diversion away from the cruising videos for this vlog. The reason for that is, as you may have seen in the last vlog, when I got to Tewkesbury Lock I had 25 minutes spare while I was waiting for the lock keeper to come back from lunch and I used that time to do an oil and filter change on the engine. The last time I did an oil and filter change I had several requests from people saying we'd like to have seen that. So this time round I filmed it and that's what this vlog is. Because I only had 25 minutes there was no time for any particularly good filming so I'm afraid all I did was stick a camera to the side of my head and therefore the filming is a it's going to make you feel slightly seasick frankly because every time I move my head obviously the camera is moving as well so it's a bit all over the place and I did try to keep it still but I didn't so it's very much a head cam point of view shot. Nonetheless it is how I change my oil and filter. The other caveat is that thinking back on it really this is more an object lesson in how not to do an oil and filter change because I was in such a rush and it wasn't really the right time to do it as I will explain. So watch it, take it with a huge pinch of salt and maybe if you don't know how to do an oil and filter change it'll give you the gist but I'm certainly not going to sit here and say this is a tutorial or this is a how-to guide because really it wasn't a very good oil and filter change. That said, before we start there are some things you will need to locate and some things you will need to buy. You will need to locate on your engine where the existing oil filter is. You will need to locate where the dipstick is. You will need to locate where the oil filler cap is that you put new oil in. Uh, what else do you need to locate? Filler cap, dipstick, oh and the oil pump. Most of the engines have on them a pump for you to pump the old oil out. Those are things you need to find. You will also need to buy a new oil filter. This is one for my engine. They typically look very similar, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit narrower, but cylindrical, little domed head. On the bottom you've got a, a rubber o-ring, you've got a central thread because it just screws onto the engine, and also these holes through which the oil is pumped. Don't confuse your oil filter with your fuel filter. The fuel filter will look remarkably similar, and it also screws onto the engine and is a little cylindrical thing. But as long as you've got the right part number, here mine is a 751-10620 for a Listopetta LPWS4, so just get the part number right and you will have the right filter. And obviously locate the right thing on the engine, don't try screwing an oil filter onto the fuel filter, uh, it, won't, it won't go and it'll make a mess. So find and buy a new oil filter. You'll also need, of course, some fresh oil of the right type and spec for your engine. This will be documented in your engine's manual. If you don't have your engine's manual, phone up the engine manufacturer and they will tell you. This stuff that my engine takes is quite common. It's 10W40 APICC. The APICC bit is an old spec dating from the 1960s, but canal boat engines are old tech, so they like stuff dating from the 1960s. So that's what my engine takes. This is 5 litres, and annoyingly, my engine takes 5.5 litres, so you have to buy two of these and then you have loads of oil spare for inevitably when the oil leaks, because your engine will leak, then you have some spare to top it up with. Other things you are going to need, kitchen towels, paper towels, hordes of paper towels, you always need these on a boat, but doubly so when you're doing an oil and filter change, because oil is going to get everywhere, all over you, all over the engine, as you will see. And not a bad idea to have a clean, not like this, but a clean funnel. I didn't have one, and again, it really would have come in handy. So those are the things you need. Let's get started. No, wait, hang on. There is something else. I told you this was going to be a bit shambolic. You may also like to get a tool to take your old oil filter off. These are strap wrenches, you, you tie them around the oil filter, you can get them in Halfords or any chandlery presumably, and they give you enough leverage to get the old oil filter off. I don't have one of those, but I came up with another solution which we'll come to in a bit. The first thing to do is warm the engine up so the oil is nice and runny and will come out easily. Then take your empty oil container and fiddle it about in the engine bay until it's underneath the hand pump for the oil. Turn the little switch on the pump through 90 degrees, otherwise you won't be able to pump the oil out. Then start pumping. 
All of this will be awkward and make you grumpy, especially if, as I did, you do this after five hours full throttle down a river, in which case the engine and everything around it is going to be scalding instead of merely warmed up. It was at this point I realised the folly of my timing and had to reach for a grubby towel to put on the engine so that I didn't burn my knee on it as I leaned over. That's better. Now just need not to scald my arms or my hands on the engine, or for that matter, scald them on the boiling oil. It is with great hindsight that I realised why knights at medieval castles used to chuck this stuff on their enemies. It's really hot. Grimace through the pain, though, and eventually, when there's mere spits and spots coming up, you have sucked all the old engine oil out. Lift out the container without spilling it all into the bilge. Groan a little, like an old man. Set the container aside, and remember to put the cap on it, otherwise there'll be a messy accident later. Now, this is crucial. Go back down and turn the little knob on the pump back through 90 degrees to where it started. At this point, you need to get the old oil filter off, and this is where the ratchet I mentioned earlier, the little strap you wrap around it, uh, will be used to unscrew it. The thing is, you only put the new oil filters on hand tight, but by the time you come to take them off, believe me, they will be absolutely solid. There'll be oil on them. You try to get your hand on them, and it almost certainly you will not be able to get it off by hand. So there are two techniques. One is you put one of these ratchet straps around it, and it gives you enough leverage and enough grip to unscrew the oil filter, or the more crude method is you take a screwdriver and a hammer and you bang the screwdriver into the old filter, it's an old one, you're going to chuck it anyway, it doesn't matter, and you can use that to lever it off. There is a third way I have discovered, because when I did my previous oil change, again, didn't have anything convenient to do it with, but I did have lying about the boat, a bit of this stuff, and this is the I don't know what you'd call it really, the sealant, um, sticky sealant stuff I used on my weed hatch. So it, it sticks onto the top of the weed hatch and forms a watertight seal. For whatever reason, I was looking at this and I was looking at the oil filter and putting that on the edge of the oil filter and turning it, it it's got enough friction on it that I was able to unscrew the old filter by hand. Surprised the heck out of me, but it worked, and I've done it twice now. So if you happen to have a bit of weed hatch seal stuff lying about, and you don't have a tool to take the old oil filter off, just literally get that, stick it down onto the side of the oil filter, and it gives you enough friction to turn it off by hand. So that's what I did. So take the bit of foam, press it against the oil filter, and turn it, and amazingly, it has enough stick to grasp the filter. Once loosened, you can twist the filter fully off with your hand. Oh, just one thing though. Ow, very hot. Yes, it's also very hot. That grubby towel is going to come in handy again here. Spin the filter off, it just unscrews, and bring it up, bearing in mind that it will be dribbling old hot oil as you do so. Take your shiny new filter, but don't put it straight on, Grab your can of fresh oil and then smear a little tiny bit around the rubber o-ring on the filter. This is to make sure of a good seal when you put it back on the engine. Don't mix up your old and new filters here. Reach back down and blindly flail about until the new filter fits onto the screw thread that the old one came off. Twist it on and do it up hand tight. Not over tight, just on solidly and with a little bit of effort so that it's not going to fall off. If your hands are oily and slippery, you may like to wipe them down, you mucky pup, so as to get a better grip on the filter. But again though, although you make it tight, not ludicrously over tight, you're not trying to arm wrestle it. Take your fresh oil and your clean plastic funnel. What's that? You don't have a funnel? What kind of idiot are you? Pour the engine oil slowly and carefully into the engine, having previously noted how much oil it needs. Mine takes five and a half litres. 
Don't try to glug it all in too quickly. It needs to flow gently into the bowels of the machine. When you get to the point where you're paranoid that you've put too much in, even though you know you haven't, mop up the mess you made through not having a funnel, wait five minutes while the oil drains right down into the engine, then take the dipstick out, wipe it clean, pop it back in and take it out again for a look. Here, the new oil wasn't even showing on the stick, so I knew I had to add a lot more. While you wait for that to go down, pop the old oil filter into the new one's packaging so it's tidy and ready for disposal. Then pull out the dipstick, wipe, reinsert and bring out again. Is the oil level between the maximum and minimum marks on the stick? If it's still low, add more, otherwise put the filler cap back on. Now we can start the engine to see if it runs OK and to check for any leaks. Do not do this until you've got enough oil in or you'll probably cook the engine. Also, don't overfill the engine or you mess things up as well. Here I'm peering down at the new oil filter trying to make sure no oil is spewing out of the sides of it. In other words, that I have put it on tight enough. That oil in the bottom is simply the mucky stuff from the old filter. Ignore that, I did wipe that up later. I went to the bother of wiping around the new filter with a paper towel just to be doubly sure there was nothing coming out of it and I had a general look round and listened to the engine to make sure all was fine. It was, so I switched the engine off. Having run it, the oil level will have gone down a little bit because of the new filter being filled with the oil, so you may need to add a little bit more, hence checking the dipstick for one final time. Just a small dollop should be needed, don't go overboard. And that is it. You have changed your oil and filter. Congratulations. It is the single, simplest, easiest and yet kindest thing you can do to an engine to give it regular oil and filter changes. With the engine now well lubricated, it's probably time for you to be the same. So reward yourself with a nice gin and tonic, why don't you? Just before I finish, a point of order about the last vlog. I had a lot of comments, people saying 50 quid to go through a lock. I should just clarify the 50 quid that I was charged in the lock isn't simply to use that lock. It's to use the whole length of the River Avon for a week. It's just they charge you while you're in the lock. But that gave me a week's license to use the Avon. Now, I seem to be alone in thinking that that was a perfectly reasonable fee. A lot of commenters outraged at the notion, but I thought it was all right. So there you go. But it's 50 quid for a week. There are other options as well. I think might be 80 quid for two weeks. I may have that completely wrong. Anyway, look at the Avon Navigation Trust website and it has all the details for you. That is it for this vlog. The next one will be the start of my trip up the Avon. The weather was just fantastic and the scenery was lovely. So I hope you'll join me for that next vlog. That's it for this one though. Cheerio.